Uh, my name's Phil Smith. I'll be calling the game for you. And alongside me, I've got Alan Storer. Uh, we have uh, done pretty much all of the games for all of the season. Uh, and with three home games left, we're in the last knockings of the season. The games between the Phantoms and the Pirates tend to be high octane affairs. And Alan, I suspect tonight will be no different. Certainly, I mean, Phantoms will be smarting from their home defeat in the cup last night, you know, which we got to by dint of beating uh, you know, tonight's opponents, the, Fal the Pirates, who will no doubt be gunning for revenge themselves. It's third versus fifth. We've got the league's, you know, second most prolific scorers against, you know, with but also the second leakiest defence against, you know, the Phantoms, who are, you know, second highest or joint third highest scorers. So it's going to be fireworks, definitely. So the uh, league table's on your screens at home there. So the Phantoms in third place, 46 games in. And uh, as you can see, 58 points. The whole Pirates, 45 games, 51 points. And I, I suspect that the Pirates might be somewhat disappointed with their league placing. Uh, certainly my expectations at the start of the season would, were, was, would be that the Pirates, along with the Swindon Wildcats, would be top of the tree. And the Telford Tigers and the Swindon Wildcats are up there, but it's going to take some Her Herculean effort for the Swindon Wildcats to catch the Telford Tigers at this stage. As for the Phantoms, uh, I suspect that they've put their money on the cup and maybe the playoffs. I think the league is gone and uh, it'll now be vying for places with Swindon, who they've got to play before the end of the season a couple of times to see whether they can catch second place. If we go to the, uh, the lineups tonight, the Phantoms actually pretty much as you were. Uh, the same lineup that played last night on Friday night, of course. Uh, a rarity in Peterborough for Friday night hockey, but no Nathan Long, but as you were with the uh, the lineup. And of course, for those of you who've not seen the Phantoms on the live stream too often, the roster's pretty familiar with the addition, of course, of number 13, Joe Hazeldean, on uh, a season long loan from the Nottingham Panthers, a fine skater, it's his birthday today as well. As for the Pirates, well, the Pirates are missing some key players, aren't they? So the Pirates are without, um, uh, okay, so David Norris, Jamie Chilcott, Bobby Chamberlain, and Josh Gent. The, the officials are just making their way onto the ice. Uh, before we leave the, before we leave the uh, lineup, there are four former Phantoms, James Archer, Sam Towner, Matty Davis, and of course, 56, Tom Stubbley. The officials tonight, Matt Thompson and Richard Belfit are the referees with the armbands and Ethan Hardy and Matt Carrington, the line judges. We wait for the teams to come out and uh, the crowd are making their way from the bar and the cafe and there's a few in and uh, one or two have traveled from Hull. The Pirates are now being led out onto the ice. We suspect it's Ashley Smith. And uh, led out then by number 35, Ashley Smith. And uh, in that uh, fluorescent green uniform, it's, uh, it's a good one, I have to say. I, I, I do like the uh, uniforms that the Pirates play in. And the Phantoms, well, they're still in their locker room. and. The Phantoms are coming off the back of a, an 11 game winning streak, but that winning streak was broken last weekend as the, the Phantoms lost in Telford and lost in Bracknell, and then of course lost last night. So it's a three game losing skid at a really, really tough time of the season to enter that kind of form. And Alan, the Phantoms, no one's talking about errors and mistakes when they're on an 11-game run. But it's not a great time to be on a three-game losing skid. No, I mean, it's, that 11-game that winning streak was always going to come to an end at some point. But I think those uh, fans that made, it, made that long trip up to Telford and then down to uh, Brighton on the following night were disappointed with some of the performances. It wasn't the fans' performance that we've grown accustomed to over the last couple of months. So I know the fans are hurting. I know the players will be hurting as well. And tonight should hopefully be the night to get back to winning ways. I, I, I absolutely would endorse that. The uh, Phantoms 
are led out by number 33, Jordan Mark. And they are wearing their orange jerseys. Uh, very much a favourite of the media team, and they get a real good round of applause from the home stands that are uh, pretty full. And Mr. Belfit there, one of the uh, referees, having a word with Matty Davis. Is that Matty Davis? No, 74, Lee Bonner. And the Phantoms just uh, fresh out of the locker room, having a skate around their own zone. The whole Pirates have already been announced in the rink and the Phantoms will be called to their own blue line. So uh, we like to use Twitter on the broadcast. And if you would like to have your tweet read out where possible and where appropriate, use the hashtag PPVHP. So the head-to-head -head between the two teams is interesting. The season started with the Phantoms beating the Pirates down here in, in Peterborough. Uh, the Pirates won a game in October in Hull and the Pirates lead the league season. Of the three games played so far, they lead 2-1. The Phantoms, of course, took the two semi-final games and won 4-2 in Hull, and then in a really bizarre high-scoring game, won here in Peterborough, 8-6. So the Phantoms took honours in the Cup, the Pirates have honours in the league, and this is the last regular season game between the two, se the two teams. And then we wait for whatever the playoffs throw up. That's Corey McEwen, he's just taken to the blue line, scored a cracker last night. Uh, Billing, I thought, was in fine form too. So, We've got our first suite of the evening, and it looks like Roe, uh, who says, come on, Pirates, let's do this. Uh, I, I think the Pirates always give the Phantoms a really, really good game. I'll talk about that a little bit more if we're going straight to the National Anthem. We are. So it's uh, time for the National Anthem. We'll be back in a moment. So they're just returning to that theme that I was on before the uh, National Anthem. Since the Pirates have joined hockey back at this level, there's been some really, really good games. I've travelled to uh, Hull a number of times and the Phantoms really have struggled to win up there. We've had some decent results down here in, in Peterborough against the Pirates, but I just wonder how much the absence of those key players, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at... Uh, at uh, Chilcott, I'm going to look at uh, Josh Jens. Don't know an awful lot about David Norris, we've obviously seen him this year, but the one for me that will light up the home stands, I'm sure, and one of those players that, that uh, if he's on your side, you absolutely adore him, and then the fans on the other team don't, and, that, and that's Bobby Chamberlain. Yeah, he's certainly a big character, that's for sure, and when he's got his hockey head on, he's a very good player but he does also let himself get goaded and does occasionally get forced into the, um, how can we put it tactfully, the more physical or overly physical side of the game. 
which you know, as we as we all know, is you know a, a dying art in in British hockey. Some would say more's the pity, but yeah, there's certainly been a lot of entertainment lost. Uh, one of the things I would add. Um, uh, uh, so Jason Hewitt, terrific player. I, I absolutely, you know, love watching Jason Hewitt and Bobby Chamberlain are two of the top scoring, point scoring players in this league this year. So Bobby's one of those guys that people will, you know, love to hate. Uh, he certainly racks up the points. I think he's integral. And, uh, and, and due to his absence, I think the Phantoms have got that little bit more of a chance tonight. Which I mean in terms of crediting Bobby Chamberlain. So the pucks wrap round the boards. Phantoms looking to get a quick start. They got a quick start last night. Jack Kirby on Twitter. Let's go Pirates. And uh, there's Captain James Ferrara. Scored a beauty from just about here last night. Turns. Uh, Smith paddles the puck away. And we are... Uh, well, we've got a hockey game, haven't we? And nice pass into former phantom James Archer and Jordan Maher does pretty much the same as Smith had done uh, paddles the puck away and uh, again great fun to see Arch back chance for Bonner to lay it off phantoms do enough Joe Hazeldean man of the match for me last night although uh, I think it was Norton who got the beers and here's Matt Bissonnette who's had elite league experience Stepanek turns, there's number 90 down there, Jonathan Kirk. And uh, if those two guys get uh, up against each other during the course of the game, there's a mismatch, mismatch of size. Although it was would be noted last night, Stepanek struggled against some of those smaller guys, didn't he? Yeah, I think mean, Step's a massive guy and he has got the turning circle of a super tanker. But when he uses his size effectively, he's one hell of a battering ram. Well, well done, veteran. Real integral part of the Phantoms. Ash Smith flashes leather and uh, we are underway. Uh, yeah, so Thompson, redolent there of the uh, NHL ref that I can't recall, who gives the instructions so clearly and loudly. But I have to say, it looks like Thompson's come with some strong leadership and that's what this game could well do with. We didn't have it last night. Opportunity for the Phantoms. It's kept in the zone. Good work there by Robbie Ferrara. And that's flashed by his brother James, just wide of the goal. So uh, I'm going to come to a tweet that's been fired in in a moment. Always love it if uh, if you viewers at home give us your predictions. And uh, we've we've got an early penalty. Or have we? There's an arm in the air. So John Fish is going to sit too. He's just sat um, Captain Ferrara down, well away from play, and considering behind it, didn't quite see what led up to it because I was watching the puck down the other end but interference call Ferrara's going to go in the box as well so let's just run through some of the some of the tweets Lee Walker the Walker family says 5-3 to the Phantoms I've got the Phantoms winning by three clear goals tonight Claire Ingham says Orange is it cup or league it's cup no, it's league, but they played in white last night and they probably haven't come through the ring yet. So uh, so it's four on four. James Ferrara is going to go two for interference and uh, Jordan Fisher will be uh, something similar. There's uh, Scott Robson, who will know these whole guys well, coming from that part of the world. Sisters. Goal! From the high slot, Martin Sisters with the uh, opening marker of the game. Here's got the replay for you. Sisters skates in from the boards, turns in, and uh, that's upstairs. And we've got 
a uh, a goal. Asmith screened and couldn't see what was coming from Susters. Typical Susters play, comes off the boards, shoots. And Jordan Marr swallows that one. So the Phantoms lead by one with a goal from Martin Susters. I'll bring you the other details of the goal shortly. Looks like uh, Matt Bissonnette, number 73, to contest the face-off. He wins it. There's a nice lane there for Kirk. It's Joe Hazeldean. Cross-size pass to Stepanek. And uh, Hazeldean checks himself. So the goal scored on 251. And the Phantoms struggle to clear their zone. They do clear their zone eventually. And the uh, Pirates have got a good response to falling a goal behind. Good controlled hockey. They're not going to panic, are they? And uh, so that's a goal for Susters from McEwen, number 71. Uh, an even strength goal, 1 0 to the Phantoms. Early doors. They scored early last night against Salford. More of the same this evening. Here come the Pirates, straight up the middle. Stubbly. Stopped in his tracks by James Ferrara, but the Phantoms have passed it straight back to number 16, Sam Towner. Nice little move. That was um, Hayward. Shot saved by Jordan Mark. And we've got seven seconds left of those two penalties. That long stretch pass there picked off. And a good shift there by Lee Hayward. The pass with... Uh, well, the flashed in front of Jordan Marr, Lee Haywood going to goal, getting in front of the netminder. Kevin Phillips, I've, I've spoken a number of times on commentary and the whole Pirates fans have not always been in agreement with me. Oh, the rebound comes straight out. Asked me quite a long way out of his goal. Now he's safe, his knees got back. And uh, a nice pass to Archer. Archer dangles and uh, Jordan Marr says no. Kevin Phillips, for me, has been a really, really top D-man. Did well with the Guildford Flames, and uh, and I think he always puts in a performance here in Peter as well. What do you reckon, Hull fans? And uh, we get a face-off in the... Oh, what a goal, a ripper from the blue line. Uh, looks like Kirk. Fine finish, absolute tracer from the blue line, and Kirk levels it up at one all. So it gets uh, from the face off into Kirk's wheelhouse, and he absolutely cannons it. A great equaliser for Kirk. Number 90 will bring you the assists as we get them announced. Phantoms. Shot saved by Smith. Uh, the puck's in the air and out of the zone. Bouglas needs to turn. Scored a, a nice little goal last night in a cameo performance. It uh, was a, a good performance last night from uh, Callum Bouglas. Uh, that pass there. Stepanek skates away. But now there's an opportunity for the Phantoms to build once more. They're into the zone. Over the blue line is the goal scorer's sisters. Joe Hazeldean. Well, the announcement in the rink is that the goal is Matty Davis. I thought it was Kirk. Kirk. Absolutely cannoned it in from the blue line, but I suspect that Matty may have just got something to it on the way. Just that little deflection. I thought I heard a click, but... So, yeah, so goal to former phantom Matty Davies. Yeah, goal to Davies then. And uh, a, a fine passage of play from the old Pirates, who've responded well. Saved by Mar. And let me just confirm that for you then, ladies and gentlemen at home. 4.59. 
The goal scored by number 26, Matty Davis. Assisted by 90, Kirk. And 56, Stubbley. Here we go again, pretty much the same move. And this time, Mar pushes it away. One all then, we've had six minutes and 40 seconds. Glenn Billing with the pass, it's touched on by number 17. Jason Hewitt. And the puck flashes in front of Smith. Kept in the zone well by the Phantoms, that's James Ferrara. Hewitt in his, to his back. And uh, this is going to be a tough game for the Phantoms this evening. Robbie Ferrara does well. Men over, men over. Shot, good save from Smith. And on Twitter, uh, Alice, AJ and Alfie are watching from home and seeing the rest of the family sat behind the net on the live stream. And that's uh, all good stuff. I hope you all enjoy the stream tonight and the team you're supporting gets, uh, gets the result you crave. Thompson's having a good night. Yeah, he's, he's definitely uh, making himself, making his presence felt, uh, making himself quite clear. Personally, I'd like to see slightly less of the officials, but you know, if it keeps a firm hand on the game, then you know, can't really complain. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. So, um, 12 minutes and 49 seconds of the first period. Still on the clock, lots of hockey in front of us. And if there are any scores across the league that you hear about, why don't you tweet them in and we can give them a, a, a shout on the live stream too. So, Phantoms took the lead early doors. A goal from Martin Susters on 2.51, levelled by Matty Davis on 4.59. Archer comes away. Uh, Pirates looking good for their uh, position in the game at the moment. They're uh, enterprising and building well. Stubbly waits, uh, but it's uh, Corral. Sent round the boards, picked up by Robson. Booglas needs to know what's, uh, what's around him. And Nathan Pollard needs to be careful. Just looking there at uh, Pollard, and we're going to get a penalty now. Uh, it's going to be a holding call. So. We're going to get a holding call. It's going to be Bouglas who sits. Could have been Pollard two minutes earlier, or 30 seconds earlier. Uh, something's got him. He doesn't normally go around slashing other players. No, um, I think it was a hit from Chalmers initially that you know, tried to get him over the boards. And I think Nathan thought he might have held on slightly too long or the hit was slightly late and he's retaliated. But as you say, really not like Nathan. Phantoms short-handed, that's a trip. Scratch what I said about the officials earlier. So the Phantoms on the penalty kill, first power play for the uh, for the Hull Pirates. Uh, and we've got one. And Hewitt goes after the man on the floor. And he has another dig. So, if we can see that one again, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to get it again. Susters breaks out. There's contact with Hewitt. Hewitt suggests that Susters has gone down like a pack of cards. Yeah, um, but once the call's been made, you're certainly not going to change. They're not going to change their minds. And I think Hewitt there is lucky that you know they haven't added you know a couple of minutes extra on. And again, Mr. Thompson's making his presence felt. Back to even strength. The Pirates had something like 26 seconds of power play. Phantoms killed it. <laughs> and uh, good job there. Pirates win the defensive faceoff. Man over. That was Davis. And the puck collected by the men in green. Hazel Dean waits. The Phantoms have got to come out of the zone. Need to do that perhaps a little more rapidly. Onto the blue line and back out again.
Philipsen over the blue line. Norton with the challenge at the point, but the play goes all the way to the uh, the goal line. Aitherton sh shoots from the. Uh, so Hazelin shoots from the base of the centre circle. It's icing, and uh, the officials make sure the players who are on the ice are still on the ice for the Phantoms. Callum Bouglas' penalty has 41 more seconds to run. James Ferrara gets a touch on it. Stepanek controls the puck around the boards. Uh, Norton edges it at, uh, towards the blue line, but it's Tom Stubbley who's got it. And the former Phantom there plays it behind the goal. Hazeldean turns, Pollard's in the centre, and now making a move. And that pass there, down low, he's cut off. Saved by Maher, he comes back out. That's uh, holding the stick. Um, opportunity and Stepanek goes through the slot and not able to convert on that occasion good strength from James Archer Phantoms extremely unhappy um, and uh, Archer straight into Mr Belfit's face we've had uh, 10 minutes and 10 seconds I was encouraged with the uh, the way that the game had started. This has already started to simmer. It certainly is, and you know, uh, games between these two sides are always fairly physical, hot-blooded affairs. But yeah, I think that this could, I think it definitely could boil over. So the puck then is with Alice Padlek. We've not seen an awful lot of this top line in an offensive capacity so far. And. Uh, you know, the Phantoms, they're going to want to get this uh, losing streak behind them. Lee Walker's just tweeted in to say Swindon are losing at home against the Bison, 2-1. And, uh, you know, every game that goes like that, maybe the Phantoms make second place. Maybe the Bison make second place. They're on a decent run of form themselves at the moment. No infringement there. Weldon thought it was a trip. It wasn't. And we've got one minute and 32 seconds. The Phantoms now on their, technically their first power play. Jason Hewitt in the box for uh, two minutes for tripping and two minutes for cross-checking. Shot saved. Good work from the netminder at the uh, Hull end. Bouglas turns. Lays it off to Susters. Susters can't control that. And uh, Davis was convinced that was going to be icing. It looks that the game's already into that chippy phase. It's level. And uh, arguments with the officials abound at the moment. Susters turns. Phantoms on the power play. And uh, last night, the Telford Tigers did an absolutely terrific job keeping the Phantoms to the outside. Here's Bouglas. That's a great pass. Phantoms moving the puck. Bouglas on the ice. You usually see Tom Norton there. Not sure whether Norton's carrying an injury. Smith keeps that one out. Bouglas waits. Phantoms patient. And it's stopped by the netminder. 14 seconds of the power play to go. Phantoms one Hull Pirates one and maybe Slava Kulikov can see the righty on the wall because with 14 seconds left he's got the fourth line on short handed then the Tigers sorry the Pirates break too much hockey and um, it's uh, congratulations then to the Pirates that's uh, a penalty killed and the Pirates break, that pass there is cut out. Well, saved by Mark. Phantoms extremely unhappy. Uh, 
The uh, suggestion there was a trip or a slew foot. And, uh, uh, well, that was Jarvis Hunt. And Joe Hazeldean, extremely unhappy that the Pirate pushed him into Jordan Marr. And the, Jason Hewitt kicks the stick away. So I think it was uh, Dr. Jarvis Hunt calling a surgery. Definitely. Um, he may be young, but he packs a heck of a wallop. And to sit Jarvis down like that, impressive from the young guy. He needs to take the cage off. He's over 18. Is he? All right, then. So come on, then, Jarvis. Let's see what you can do behind the visor. But still, good hit. Seven minutes to go. Uh, and Jarvis Hunt is... Uh, He's one of the prospects in the last couple of years that's, uh, that's uh, gone the distance. You know, the one or two others have, have kind of dropped down or changed clubs, but uh, I'm, I'm impressed with Jarvis Hunt. He's, he's stayed the course in a team that's challenging for honours. Nathan Pollard, eased out of it by Kevin Phillips. And Connor Pollard there battling on the boards. It's picked up by Hewitt. Nice short pass and a good interplay with uh, Lee Bonner. Uh, and Phillips, Bonner collects, drags it and goes for the uh, short side. 6.38 remaining in the period. Kirk shoots, Ma saves and uh, Bonner's involved with... Uh, it's difficult to see over the, uh, the players there. Might be Robbie Ferrara. Robbie Ferrara. That well-known enforcer, uh, Ferrara, but he's clearly seen something he, he doesn't like. Um, possibly Pirates taking liberties with, yeah, with Jordan Marr, and he's doing exactly the right thing. He's standing up for his goalie. One all, face-off in the Phantoms defensive zone, and if you would like to use the hashtag PPVHP, we'll try and give those tweets uh, a shout. Lifted there, no goal. Phantoms get a decision. Mr. Belfort says it's in the face mask. And uh, Archer's shaking his head. But the response from the Pirates makes me think that they knew that that was into the face mask. Yeah, they, you know, they are going to you know, protest their innocence, as they're fully entitled to do. But they were somewhat half-hearted. There were no wild, jubilant celebrations. So, yeah, I think they, I think they knew. Robson and uh, number... 16, um, Santana having a bit of a, a tussle. Chance, goal. Matty Davis with his second of the evening in the slot. He had a man close to him, but his release was absolutely instant. See the replay. But goes into the corner. Oh, well. Matty Davis didn't have a man close enough to him. My uh, feeling initially was... That he was um, that he was well marshalled. He was uh, he was pretty free from uh, pressure. Phantoms were leading by one. They trail by one. Matty Davis putting his name on the board early for the man of the match. We've got a lot of time to go, but the old pirate has already bagged a brace. Uh, fine shot, real quick release, and, and lots of power. Given the freedom of the city of Peterborough. Yeah, and. You know with Matt, you know, you know with Davies, he is a quality finisher. And if you give him that amount of time and that amount of space, straight in front of the goal, nine times out of ten, he is going to score. So I think we're going to need to sit somebody on him. Yeah. Opportunity. McEwen. Oh, it's saved by Smith. So Phantom's trying to get back on terms immediately. Good work from the netminder. Actually, good work from the Phantoms. Breaking with speed, which is what they can do. And I'm afraid in this little run they're going through, we don't see it enough. Yeah, and, and that second line, you know, so, the so-called SMS line, when it works well, when it works together, it is absolutely devastating. But full credit to Smith there. He's waited, he's not committed early, and has made a fine, fine save. Goal scored on 13 42 
by 26 from 16 and 2. Phillips around the boards, that's uh, not given as icing. Oh my word, that's a, well, okay. Let the camera do the work. Well, let's uh, just see that again, the Pirates break with speed. You can see that on your camera at home, on your screen at home. And that's a straight into the player, straight through the numbers into the boards. And that's, uh, that's poor. Uh, you can see and tell by the reaction of the uh, the rest of the Pirates, there's no great complaints there, or it doesn't get you anywhere anyway, does it? But uh, straight through the back of the uh, Phantom player. And uh, the Phantoms go on a, a power play. Lee Bonner is in the penalty box. Well done to contest the penalty, the, sorry, the, uh, the face-off, and here's Tom Norton. Bonner then has two plus ten for boarding. Phantom's on the power play, here's Glenn Billing. <laughs> he gets held up by uh, Hewitt. Chance for the Phantoms. Oh dear me, that's so high. It's in nearly in the uh, in, yeah, it's in the uh, boxes above the goal. Five minutes and thirteen seconds left in this period. It's been uh, exciting stuff. A couple of good goals, and the Pirates lead by one. Plenty of penalty minutes, so it's Bonner and Neil are in the penalty box. Stepanek going for the pass to uh, Corey McEwen. That was Stepanek once more. Hewitt into the back of Susters. Uh, that's stopped by Smith. And Bissonette does well. Great play from Hewitt to get the puck. Uh, well, I was just going to say on commentary, I don't know whether Susters has really upset uh, the, the, uh, the Pirates. Uh, it's getting crowded in there, and I don't know why Neil's in there. Um, unless Neil's sitting in because it's the two plus ten. But I, th I think Hewitt is going to need to be very, very careful. He was um, quite frank with his exchange of views with, with the uh, with the officials there, and if he carries on like that, you know there could be misconduct happening. So I think he needs to uh, be a bit careful. Uh, the Phantoms have got 42 seconds off. Oh. A five on three. And the puck is now in the uh, in the phantom zone. So do use that hashtag PPVHP. James Ferrara. Phantoms would love a goal in the next 18 seconds, but. The uh, Pirates have done a good job so far in keeping them out. Uh, ten seconds left. Ferrara. Oh, and that gets uh, redirected. Two seconds. I think we can safely say. Ash Smith saves. And the Phantoms now... Change of personnel. Pollard, Pollard, McEwen. Stepanek. Sisters, five forwards. <laughs> Phantoms need a goal. Um, the Pirates have uh, dealt comfortably, I think, with pretty much everything that the Pirates have thrown at them. Corey McEwen. 
to uh, contest that face-off. McEwen wins it. One minute and nine seconds of this power play still to go. Plenty of time and the Pirates holding the Phantoms out. A little reverse and a goal from Connor Pollard. Power play marker. Phantoms back on terms. Phantoms two. Old Pirates two. Lee Walker says, is there enough room in the penalty box? There's plenty of room in that penalty box. We can get another couple of them in there and we've got some space in ours if they want to join in. So, a goal scored. Power play goal by uh, Connor Pollard. And we're at uh, even strength. Five on five hockey with three minutes and 24 seconds of the period to go. Hazelin gets there first. And we've got a bit of a showdown. Fisher and Gretton. <laughs> there we go. Let's see, here we go. Gretton skates into Fisher. Gretton looks for it. And uh, Fisher not very happy. Lee Walker. Let's see whether there is. Well, Fisher and Gretton going at each other. Nonsense from the two of them, really. Yeah, bit of handbags, lots of verbals, but I don't think I don't think we've seen the end of that one. Certainly with the amount of uh, conversation that was happening. But we've got Weldon and the pirate skipper talking to the ref, talking to the referee. So I think we'll be spelling out their vision for the rest of the game, and it will be calm it down. The goal's been given to Nathan Pollard, not Connor Pollard, but uh, whether he got a, a, a tip. So I think in the last game here between the two sides, the uh, Pirates racked up some penalty minutes and the danger for them is that it'll unravel. It, it's still two all, but they need to keep out of the box. Three minutes and 18 seconds of the period to go. Phantoms two or Pirates two and uh, We're going to get uh, a decision on where we're going to restart. <laughs> Kirk. Big shot and the uh, stick of James Archer getting into Jordan Mars grill. Nothing wrong with that. 156 left. It's uh, one, two, three, four, five. It is in fact a whole Pirates power play. Joe Gretton in the box. And Rowe says Fisher needs to show him who's boss when they come out. I think, and as Alan said on the commentary a few minutes ago, I, I think we've not seen the end of that row and you might get your wish. So that shot there, uh, high and wide, and uh, the Pirates. Jason Hewitt then being challenged by Nathan Pollard, who's been accredited with the second goal for the Phantoms. Offside. Oh, 2.53 remaining in the period. Phantoms two, Pirates two. Face off in the neutral zone, won by the Pirates. Sisters, uh, Billingham, I'm having a terrible night tonight. 
there's Panelek, and uh, we've had 40 seconds of the power play. Chance saved by Mar. I'll bring you the details of the Fisher and Gretton penalties. And a further 10 minute misconduct for dropping the gloves. The time value is 16 minutes 42 seconds. So that's Phantoms player number 35. He receives 2 plus 2 for roughing. And a 10 minute misconduct for dropping the gloves. Over the blue line by the Phillips. 16 minutes. 1 minute and 51 seconds. seconds left. So just to clear things up, um, Pirates number 22, Jordan Fisher, 2 minutes for roughing. Phantoms 35, Joe Gretton, 2 plus 2 for roughing and 10 minutes for dropping the gloves. Uh, uh, Row on Twitter, you're not going to get your wish of seeing Fisher and Gretton go anytime soon. Nathan Pollard knocks the puck on. It's collected by number 62, Kevin Phillips. 122 remaining in the period, and the Phantoms. Phantoms to full Penalties killed, Stepanek out, and that's a penalty. That's going to be another penalty against the Phantoms. Oh, well, Joe Hazeldean's down. I actually thought there was a penalty by a phantom. There. I thought, that's a, I thought that was a trip. I'd agree, but by the looks of things, there's then the clip in on, on Hazeldean, who does appear to be in some distress. But yeah, by the looks of things, Robson has gone for, has gone for two, so that'll be the tripping call. Well, we don't have VAR, maybe thank goodness, but you can see at home that that's after the play. Bissonette brings the stick in support, of, but that was, uh, well, it looked like Hazeldean got caught. You'll see that again on your replays. Phantoms to the uh, penalty kill. Hazeldean in a great deal of discomfort. Uh, Huey can't co collect that puck. So it's Robson has two minutes for interference. And the uh, Pirates are on their third power play of the period. Kirk over the blue line. Phantoms trying to keep the Pirates to the outside of the uh, zone. Bissonette. And Susters takes on Kirk. And gets away from him. Hewitt wrestles the puck from him. And the Phantoms pick it off once more. Tom Norton to Stepanek. Norton breaking the, you know... Great, you know, hard to mouth times there. Uh, Norton with a lung busting run. Stepanek, short handed with a little reverse, couldn't get it in the goal on that occasion. 10 seconds left of the period. Time for a shot, he's got to shoot. Oh, saved by Smith. And there's going to be a penalty after the buzzer. So the goals in the period scored by uh, Martin Susters, Matty Davis with a brace, and then number 12, Nathan Pollard. But the, that, the fact there's been four goals doesn't give you the entire story of the period, Alan. The story of the period is it has been bad tempered, and in the main, a lot of that has come from the whole Pirates. Yeah, and an awful lot of it seems to be coming from Hewitt, um, directed at Susters. And I don't know if Martins has somehow needled or got to be, seems to definitely got under Hewitt's skin. Uh, and even heading back down to the locker room, there appears to be 
a lot of ill feeling, a lot of ill temper. And I do think that the Stripies are going to have to get a grip on this game very, very soon. Otherwise, someone could get very, very badly hurt. What's up, Joe? Joe Heslin's OK. So, uh, we've had 20 minutes to all. More talking points tonight in most uh, in the 20 minutes than we
Welcome back to Peterborough, ladies and gentlemen. The Phantoms are level at two goals each with the whole Pirates. Goals in the first period, uh, initially from uh, Martin Susters, a brace from Matty Davis, and a leveller at two all from Nathan Pollard, although I thought it was Connor's goal. The uh, penalty minutes racked up, and uh, Alan, you've got some news about uh, one of the Phantoms, Joe, Gretchen, uh, Joe Hazeldean. Yeah, so... Hazel Dean was caught, whether innocuously or not, towards the end of the period, was helped from the ice. We've seen him being helped then from the bench, seeming to uh, to receive some medical treatment, but he, he didn't look he didn't look particularly healthy. So Hazel Dean, I don't think we'll see him this evening. And uh, there was a penalty on the Hull Pirates right at the end of the uh, period. That was number five, Lee Hayward. Uh, I think that was two for tripping. And the shots on goal in the first period were 15 on Jordan Marr and 12 on Ash Smith. Scores two all. Plenty of bad blood. It's four on one, two, three, four, five. That's wrong. It should be four on four. And uh, as I was just saying there in the introduction to the period, plenty of bad blood. Uh, I think uh, the Pirates have certainly come with some desire to get the points and they're going to get them however they may. So Stepanek, and let me make clear, Phantom's not innocent in all of that. Uh, Joe Gretton with the uh, instigator and the drop in the gloves penalty so we're unlikely to see him for a while uh, he got a 2 plus 2 plus 10 so the puck deep in the pirate zone and the phantoms now oh, shot from Norton high. phantoms then to full strength and it's uh, 5 on 4 there's going to be another penalty no, there wasn't. It was an offside, my mistake. And uh, the Phantoms break. They're on the power play now. Chance! Oh, I have no idea how that's not in the net. Panelek with the shot. 47 seconds of the power play remaining. Lee Hayward in the box. Phantoms two, Pirates two. It's going to come out to... Oh, it's a good stop. And uh, the puck brought away. Billing being held but uh, nothing doing there so Phantoms with a couple of early looks promising start to the second period for the home team they need a win uh, they're on a couple of games uh, losing streak look like offside to me well done but nothing given back up to the half board 10 seconds left Norton Ferrara oh dear me as Smith kicks the uh, net into the cafe. Well, you know what? I think we should get a recording of this. The nets here aren't terribly well secured. Um, the pins are more like nubs than pins. So, yeah, he's, it's going to happen. Two all. Two minutes of the second period gone. And uh, it's, it's been a good Saturday night entertainment. Phantoms have the man over. It's the fourth line. 
Oh, what defending there. Great stuff from the uh, the Pirates. Just having a look to see who that was. Yeah, Kirk, wasn't it? He's had a good, uh, good evening's work so far. Jarvis Hunt. And the puck eventually picked up by the Pirates. Played back in by Bouglas. Phantoms on the half board. Here's Robson. Even strength now. Pirates break. And that's played into the area behind Mark. And we uh, get a whistle on the play. The whole Pirates have iced the puck. Do use the hashtag PPVHP. We'll try and read your tweet out where it's appropriate. And, uh, and we get a break in play. Face off in the whole pirate zone, and that's won by the men in green. Phantom's looking to capitalise on what's been enterprising play at the start of the second period. Ferrara dragged over, maybe, but nothing given. Chance. Corey McEwen. Picked off quickly, great work by the Pirates there. Here is McEwen. Oh, and uh, Stepanek goes high. Uh, it's uh, Phantom shooting from all sorts of angles, but nothing anywhere near accurate enough. That should be picked up by Bissonnette on the, on the uh, boards. And the Phantoms just need to be careful. Here is Bissonnette. Turns, good play. Going low is Hayward, and the puck is up and over. So, uh, four minutes gone, all but, and the Phantoms made an enterprising start to the period, but that just shows you that the passage of play, how good the Pirates are when they break. Oh, the offensive quality in the, in the Pirates is you know, outstanding. You can, see, you can see where the money's been spent building the Pirates roster. They've gone for attack, 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 um, and it just shows that you can't, you know, you, you know, you can't give them, you know, an inch of space. But just, I've just been having a look over the uh, side of the Phantoms bench. Ross Clark's come back and seems to be spitting blood quite literally. So I think he may have caught something under the cage there, might just loosen the tooth. Four minutes and eight seconds of the period already in the book. No further addition to the score. Phantoms two, Pirates two. Pirates win the draw again. They've been good in the face-off circle this evening. Robson battles well. That uh, cross-ice pass from Nathan Pollard gets picked. No tripping call. Phantoms have a man over. Goal! Weldon goes top shelf. And there's a... Go ahead, goal from number 29, Will Weldon. Great break from the Phantoms. Robson's done well. The little saucer pass. Weldon elevates the puck over Ash Smith's forlorn dive. Phantoms back in the lead. I thought there was a hint of possibly offside but having seen the replay it was mighty mighty close but obviously the uh, stripe is not exactly what they're doing so uh yeah three two i think it's game on phantoms three pirates two Number two and the time of the goal was 24 22. Assisted by Tom Norton, 29 22. Sorry, 4 22. Face off in the neutral zone, and with less than five minutes gone in the second period, the Phantoms have regained a lead that they took early, early in the game only to be pegged back by two Matty Davis goals. Good turn on the boards. Out to Kirk, who's been instrumental in one of those Davis goals.
Good play by the uh, Pirates. They hold on to it. Saved by Marr. And saved by Marr once more. James Archer follows it up, but James Archer's a, a great lad and uh, we wouldn't expect anything untoward from Archer. He's a, he's a solid guy. Absolutely. I believe you still own one of his shirts. As a, recounted on, on broadcasts many times, he... Uh, the only fight that he ever got into. Oh, Ma saves. And that's surely a high stick from Bissonnette. Yeah, it is. So, yeah, uh, James Archer, I, I sponsored his shirt. And uh, he got in a fight and ripped the damn thing. So, uh, uh, Arch, cracking guy. So, uh, high stick, put into the neutral zone. Not all of the Pirates see eye to eye with that one. Hewitt wins the draw yet again. And you've got these quality guys in the face-off circle and uh, it, it sets up momentum and possession time and time again. Kirk, that gets a, a, a deflection. Stepanica we've seen very little of in the game so far. Trips, uh, he's man, I would have thought. Yep. And that's Trips Hewitt. And the uh, whole Pirates will go on the power play. Use the hashtag PPVHP. Uh, the the uh, McEwen sisters, Stepanek line, pretty anonymous this evening. And, and then Stepanek caused us uh, to have to go on the penalty kill again. Yeah, it's still play from the big check there. Um, just needs to be aware that you know a wildly campaign like Hewitt will take everyone's go. I'm not suggesting for one moment that Hewitt's you know gone over easily, but but yeah, that you know, that SMS line just isn't clicking at the moment. Uh, again, we've got three individuals rather than that solid unit. So yeah, I think we need to work on communication there a little bit. Well, let's keep it in the zone. They've done well, haven't they, at the start of this power play? But they've. Uh... They've seen almost 30 seconds expire. Here is uh, 26. Matty Davis. Hewitt uh, winds up. Here is Davis. Lovely pass, tape to tape. And round. Phantoms could have a man over. Will Will Weldon get there first? He's uh, beaten by Hewitt. And Weldon calls for uh, replacement. Davis. Pirates over the blue line. And that's out of the zone. Ferrara with a, enough pressure at least. Bissnet's uh, increasingly influential in the game. And I, I like what I see from Bissnet. He's very, very fluid skater. You know, with the, the amount of elite league experience that he's got, you would expect that. But yeah, I'm, I won't lie, I, I was kind of underwhelmed in the first period. But he's definitely beginning to... Archer. Jordan Marr uh, out all the way. Yeah, uh, going back, I'd say no, I kind of missed missing out first period, but as you say, Phil, as this second period goes on, he's coming more and more into it. I think maybe he's a little bit shocked of the um, state of the facilities or lack thereof. You know, look clearly not the. Uh, well, he skates in, in Hull. He's probably used to ice on the, on the <laughs> ring uh, rather than some ice, some water, and some sand which we, uh, we lovingly call home. So, uh, oh, Corey McEwen as well. He skates uh, past Phillips. And there's going to be another penalty. Just see if we can get that again. But uh, with Stepanek's penalty only having 19 seconds, if we just have a look at that there. Well, it looks like Phillips has gone for two. So it's four on four. Uh, well, 
The Phantoms fans at that end of the ring thought there was an infringement. For my money, it was soft. Man in the slot. It's the panic. Man over his sisters. Oh, my word. Oh, my word! Connor Pallard with the goal! Straight out of the box. Stepanek plays it. Sisters. Oh, wow. Well. Very, very sexy. Phantoms four. Pirates two. It was a good initial save from Smith there. Uh, you know, pressurising the forwards. Uh, you know, Stepanek and Sisters will have wanted that to have gone in first time, but... Pollard's there, practically undresses Smith and puts it into an empty net. And absolutely no uh, criticism of the netminder there. I think uh, Smith's had a really good game. So, uh, Billing lifts it again, and another player we've not seen too much of. Four-two. So assisted by. Sisters and Stepanek. And the Phantoms were very close to another there. Hayward got a puck in the grill for his paint and he's holding James Ferrara. Pirates with a chance to get back on terms. There's another penalty being called. On Norton for slashing, I think. So the last goal was on 27-54. Connor Pollard from Sisters and Stepanek. Norton in the box. Five on four hockey. Second power play of the period for the visitors, the whole Pirates. Chance. Matty Davis gets away. Kewitt waits, he's in space, he stays over the hash marks on oh, just missed controls. You should uh, make a note of that, it happens so rarely. 25 seconds of the power play have already expired. Pirates building, there's a man over, it's Davis, he's on a hat trick. Here come the Pirates, uh, Kirk, Hewitt, the pass there, it bounces, Bissonette doesn't get the benefit of the boards there, and there's a chance, Gareth O'Flaherty, number 73, oh, and it bounces and bobbles, and uh, one of those opportunities you'd perhaps wish had uh, fallen elsewhere, but got a lot of time for number 73, he's a really, really nice guy. So the Phantoms on the penalty kill, looking for the short-handed opportunity themselves after conceding one or two shorties during the course of the year. Sisters wins the puck. Pirates power play just failing to get set up on this. Uh, so that's another trip. That's got to be a trip. It's going to be uh, five on three for 20 se 22 seconds. Lack of discipline all ends up. Yeah, I mean, both teams are uh, a little bit sloppy with some of the playing, certainly in terms of discipline. But stat fans, just been doing a quick bit of back of the fag packet maths. With that assist, Sussex is now Phantom's leading point scorer. Four two to the Phantoms, Norton and Robson are in the penalty box, joining uh, Joe Gretton. Hewitt. Davis. Hewitt once more. Into the glass. So uh, that's Scott Robson, two for tripping. And there are seven seconds left of the five on three. Oh, 
Jason Hewitt. Pirates uh, go for the shot. Phantoms get a man back, so that's one penalty kill. Lifted. Uh, Ma looks over his shoulder. It's gone wide. Hewitt again in space. Again shoots blocked by Weldon. And Norton battling there. Phantoms desperate to keep their two-goal lead. Saved or batted down at least by Jordan Mark. Billing into his man. I think that was Davies. A shot. It's got. Well, I just thought that was behind Jordan Mar. I thought that was in. Yeah, another quality strike from Kirk that he's you know wound it up and you know, given it the full beans. But credit to the Phantoms. They've killed the five on three. And a minute left on uh, Robertson's penalty. So in the first period, Jason Hewitt was was angry and, and looked particularly angry with sisters. He's had a really disciplined period, and as a result, the, the, the Pirates look good. Yeah, and that's what you expect from a player coach. You know, he has got to be setting the standard for the rest of his players to follow. You know, as a leader, if you're getting riled and losing your temper, then you cannot expect those that you lead and those that follow you not to do the same. So. Yeah, we said yeah we were disappointed with him first period, but he's show, beginning to show now what a class act he actually is. So number 16, uh, Santana, Pirates still on the power play. Hewitt into the glass. 30 seconds left. This has been an awful lot of penalty killing. It's a goal. Lovely finish. Looks like Towner with a goal, and it's uh, applause from the hardy band of Pirates fans and a power play goal. Third power play goal of the evening and uh, Townend as well. Yeah, it does well, Ma had no chance. So a, a goal with a uh, well, little, little um, under a minute of that power play still on the uh, on the cards but the Pirates have pulled within one and a save from Mark no icing so Davies gets a point and uh, Matt Bissonette comes close number 16 into the slot from Sepanik, but it's picked up by the visitors and the Pirates break through the neutral zone. Joe Gretton's back out there after a rather lengthy sit and he loses control. Saved by Mard as well, but the miscontrol from Joe Gretton invites pressure from the whole Pirates. Susters plays it uh, into the boards, but the Pirates do well. There's Corey McEwen. Connor Pollard, goal scorer, of course, steps away from the challenge. There's a man at the point. It's uh, Bouglas. Oh, the puck bounces. It's got to be a penalty. Oh, and there you go. There you go, boys. He's putting Pollard in as well. So, it's going to be four on four, I think. Connor Pollard's going to sit too. Four on four then. Number 27 of the whole Pirates, which is uh, Stephen Chalmers. And number 88 for the Peterborough Phantoms, which is Connor Pollard. So we uh, 
trying to wait for things to get sorted. The penalty on the Pirates, if indeed there is one, isn't on the board. But there are only four players on the ice. Mr Carrington gets ready to drop the puck. So Connor Pollard's penalty isn't on the board. So Phantom's on the power play. Phantom's lead by one. Norton, oh Phantom's. Phantom's moving the puck well. And uh, we said a few minutes ago that the, the period was, was calmer. We're just at that point again that we were in the first period. It's got Chippy. So the Phantoms are on the power play. Chalmers is in the box. Collard's sitting as well, but uh, his penalty is not on the board. No, and I'm, I'm slightly bemused as to how that constituted roughing. Um, but that's why we're not wearing orange armbands. Uh, so, Connor Pollard has two for roughing. Pirates, Chalmers, two for cross-checking and two for roughing. And Lee Walker tells us it's Swindon, three. Bison, three. Save. What a save from Ash Smith. And uh, Glenn Billing City one. The net is off its moorings once more. It's 253, 23, that's 253, 23. And the winning number of these shows be back draw is 118. Five minutes and 35 seconds left in the uh, second period. And the Hope you've enjoyed your entertainment so far. It's been a good one. Uh, we have a little break in play. So the net, the net's off its moorings again, but uh, it's five on four. Corey McEwen to contest. The face-off, Bracknell won, uh, London Raiders won. Oh, no, the Phantoms with us. Oh, Susters saves me talking through a short-handed attempt. Uh, Bissonnet with the uh, race away. 4-3 to the Phantoms, 43 seconds of Chalmers. Penalty still on the clock. It gets away from Corey McEwen. And I would have liked to have seen Stepanek use his size there and... Stop the man, but he didn't. 27 seconds of the power play. Two go. Oh, stretch pass. Pollard tips it on. Phantoms with a chance, perhaps, as the penalty expires. Sisters can't get a shot off. Uh, nor can Brad Bowery. And the Pirates play to the right wing, picked up by Stepanek. Well done, the whole Pirates. Susters drops it for Pollard into the slot, and Bowring goes his way. It's another penalty, dear me. <laughs> so I, I absolutely did read Archer's lips. Uh, not for public consumption, but that will be Archer sitting for two. Four twenty-one left of the period. It's been disjointed and scrappy, and there have been penalties all the way through. Overtime, Swindon, uh, Basingstoke. It looks like the Wildcats levelled it up on 59.04. Good play from Aaron Nelson. 
Padalek. Down to Billy. Weldon can't get the shot away. Phantoms retain possession. Saved by Smith. Weldon, the whole netminder. Final score in Bracknell. Raiders 2, Bees 1. And that was after overtime. The Phantoms on the power play again. Phantoms have uh, scored a couple of power play goals this evening. Nice turn from uh, Ferrara. My, uh, the uh, Phantoms are going to miss him. Padalek into the corner. Hayward with a high arm, but it's still just five on four. Great turn from Hewitt. And the Phantoms are on the power play, but all five orange jerseys are in their own zone. And Tom Norton watched carefully and capably by Hewitt. Now the Phantoms break. Oh, well, the uh, Glenn Billings stick was on the ice. Shot there from the Pirates and oh, miscontrol by Douglas. And uh, the Pirates are giving as good as they get in, in this power play. Phantoms failing to get set up. I think they need to get in the locker room and just compose themselves. Let's see if they can get a goal before they do that. It'll make the intermission talk a whole lot different. The boogeyman with the shot. Eight seconds left on Archer's penalty. Looks like the uh, away team have killed another one. Robson. And uh, Bonner is out. So even strength hockey now. First time for a while, isn't it? Scott Robson drops the puck for Susters. This is a well done, Smith. 4 3, 2 minutes and 7 seconds. A good start from Smith, but Susters has fired it straight at him. Um, but he's, Smith is having a cracking game tonight. He's vastly removed from the Smith we saw here last time out. Defensive zone draw won by the visitors. And uh, Bissonet controls, touched on by Hewitt, who goes down in instalments. Jarvis Hunt, the Phantoms need to be careful. They've got uh, a young line out against uh, some top, top guys. Okay, so one of the Pirates looked to me to have been pulled over in the crease. I think it was uh, 74. Bonner. Bowering fires, it wraps around the boards, and Weldon gets there first. One minute and five seconds left in the period. Use the hashtag PPVHP. We've not heard too much from you guys in the last few minutes. And it's the final minute now of the period. Pirates break. Can they get a leveller? Well, Ma went down. The puck uh, deflected before it got to him. Gretton to the half boards, it's bouncing. Hand pass brought out. Yes, yeah, a hand pass from Stubbly there. Uh, it was fairly blatant, so it'll be face-off time. And in Swindon, it went to overtime, but the Bison have won 4-3. James Ferrara spinning. Uh, we've got 31 seconds of the period left. Phantoms not had an awful lot in an offensive way in the last few minutes. But the defence has stood tall as the Pirates have grown 
in strength. There's a pass here. Bouglas. Shot shoots wide. Six seconds of the period to go. And there's a buzzer. Phantoms four. Phantoms lead four three. It was uh, two all at the end of the first period, so the Phantoms have a lead. Alan, last word on the period from you. So Han didn't quite have the fireworks of the first period, but still simmering nicely and with only a one goal lead. Yeah, this game isn't done by a long chalk. Welcome back to Peterborough.
Welcome back to Peterborough. The uh, Pirates led out by Ash Smith, who's had a real good performance this evening. And uh, the officials have taken to the ice as well. Matt Thompson and Richard Belfair, Ethan Hardy and Matt Carrington. Um, be fair to say, I think it's been a mixed performance from the officials this evening. Yeah, definitely. I don't like to criticise the Stripies because they do do a tough job. But yeah, there's... They've been inconsistent. Uh, I mean, we had the trip down at the cafe end on, I say the trip in inverted commas, on Bowering, which I honestly don't think should have been given. And then a similar one down the other end that, you know, eventually worked in the Phantom's favor, but should definitely have been called. So yeah, start, as we said, started off strongly and has kind of fizzled out. Phantom's led out by Jordan Mark. And the Phantoms lead at 4-3, so the go-ahead goal at the moment scored by Connor Pollard. So the Phantoms take to the ice there, of course, without Joe Hazeldean, who went uh, off the ice at the end of the first period and was escorted. Uh, he couldn't leave the, uh, the bench without being assisted. The Phantoms have got Glenn Billing, James Ferrara and Alice Padlet, Matty Davis, Towner and uh, is that Archer on the far side. Uh, so we're underway here. Do use the hashtag PPVHP. Phantoms will want to secure a victory. They're uh, on a three-run losing, three-game losing streak, and we're starting to get to the, play, the time now where league positions are starting to get uh, sorted. I imagine the Telford Tigers are at the top. Swindon lost at home in overtime to the Bison tonight. Chance saved by Jordan Marr quick release, I think it was Archer. Shot saved by um, uh, Mar once more and uh, Padalek sees the puck out of the Peterborough Phantom zone. Puck brought back into the Phantom zone and we have a fence off that will be Contested by Jason Hewitt, who wins the draw yet again. The puck was pumped in from the point, but it's got deflected. Glenn Billing unhappy, and there's a line change. Uh, Bonner does well. It's the better of McEwen on that occasion. McEwen uh, doesn't uh, clear the zone. Bouglas looks to see what's available. It's been a quieter start to this period than we've had in the previous two. Of course, plenty of time for either side to stake a claim to win the points. So the Phantoms took an early lead into the game, pegged back by Matty Davies, Hull took the lead, and it is... Uh, uh, ..the case that the teams traded goals. We've got a bench penalty, I'm not sure whether it was a delay of game or too many men. Uh, it was too many men, uh, although I could have sworn I just saw Mr Belfit counting up to five, but, yeah, so it's bench minor for too many men. Crucial moments for the Phantoms. They, they, they've had chances in the game, uh, but the Pirates have managed to pull one goal back. And, and, and this kind of position is, is very dangerous for the Phantoms. Certainly is. Um, and you do wonder whether or not the Phantoms will come to rue, you know, some of the profligate finishing that we've had. But you know, credit, to, you know, credit to the Pirates, D. They've, re they've restricted some of the chances, but equally, yeah, we need to, you know, we need to stand tall for the next two minutes. Foot race, Pollard, 
against Smith. Oh, denied. Good work from Nathan Pollard, but the Pirates absolutely equal to it. There you get an off cycle. Oh, we get a face off in the neutral zone. Scrappy start to the final period. It's been disjointed, really, really, for the majority of the game. The game's been punctuated by penalties, and the Phantoms are killing yet another penalty. I'm not sure that it's been um, always warranted, as Alan referred to earlier on, but the uh, Phantoms have got to stay composed if they're going to take the two points. Do use that hashtag PPVHP. Phantoms have had a couple of breakaways on Smith, who's denied both of them. O'Flaherty in the last period, and uh, from Nathan Pollard there. The game just has dropped in intensity. We just wait to see it go again. Into the slot, good play from the Pirates. Ma takes the uh, rolling puck. From your family and all of us here, and the Peter of Phantoms. Phantoms getting into position. Davis to contest the face off. Uh, Pirates win it. The puck sent wide to Hayward, cut out by James Ferrara, but the Pirates have it yet again. Good passage of play this for the uh, visitors. Out to the blue line, Hewitt. Whips it in, it's bouncing, it's in the goal, it's a power play goal. Well, the uh, whole Pirates have come from 4-2. Their last goal was on 31-57, but they've just scored a leveller. Hewitt flicked it in from the uh, blue line. And it looks like, just trying to see who that is. Might be Towner, but... Uh, and that was a power play goal. Pirates have scored two power play goals this evening. That's uh, a second one. So four all here in Peterborough. Neither team can get away. Yeah, it was Towner. Second of the evening from Hewitt and Davis. And the Phantoms have not got firing yet at the start of this final period. Bissonette into the slot. Oh, what a ripper! Lee Bonner. Great finish made by that man, Bissonette. So the four-all goal, 43-06. Pirates, four-all. Towner from Hewitt and Matty Davies. And then Lee Bonner with an absolute... Ripper. Great finish from Bonner there. Left Mar with absolutely no chance, but Phantoms need to switch on now because, you know, we did this last night, ship two goals in less than a minute, and, you know, we need now to settle down, recompose, and come back. Yep, so that uh, is a third unanswered goal for the whole Pirates, and they are sniffing blood. They sniff a, 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 an away victory. They lead this, the league series to one against the Phantoms already. Ash Smith's had a good game, but he's lost his stick there. Have the Phantoms got enough to get anything on goal? Keep it in the... Oh, it's going to be offside, out they come. So... So... Uh, 35 seconds between Towner's goal and Bonner's goal. Bonner from Bissonnette and Hewitt. And the Phantoms ship three unanswered. And the 4-2 lead is turned into a 5-4 uh, deficit. 15 minutes to go, plenty of time.
But the Phantoms, as Alan said a few minutes ago, really need to start to uh, to get in this game. And only moments, really, wasn't it, after there's a penalty against the Pirates. Well, they could have called it twice. Mars gone. Phantoms go on the power play. What's concerned me there, though, is Smith's been left without a stick for a good minute's worth of play. In that case, one of the D-men needs to hand over a stick because that's just left that left, left Smith completely unprotected. And, uh, As Smith uh, has had his critics, but he's had a good game tonight, and uh, you know answered and, and answered some of those critics back, hasn't he? He certainly has. Um, I've been critical of him in the past. I've not particularly rated him, but tonight he has, you know, he stood on his head. But he has been left exposed by his D-men on several occasions. Oh, Phantoms. Jason Hewitt fires and uh, the Phantoms are fortunate. Oh, Bissonnette with a slash. And it plays it. So it's uh, Pirates number 28, Wilcox, two minutes for tripping. Phantoms, oh, just can't uh, control it, that's Padalek. One minute and 13 seconds of the power play still to go. Hope you're enjoying the game at home, especially Pirates fans, they've... Uh, Done superbly well at the tra tailing end of the uh, trailing end of the uh, second period and into this third, and uh, the Phantoms. Well, they still have the best part of a minute to go on this power play. These uh, these players: Susters, McEwen, Stepanek, Padalek, Ferrara. Well, nothing called on that. That's Archer. Susters doesn't look like he likes that. And back come the Phantoms. Are they going to get there first? So Susters unhappy. And the only way to answer the Pirates at the moment is to get that puck in the net. Stepanek, tense times. Now the Phantoms get set up in the power play formation. 18 seconds left. Callum Bouglas, no lane there to shoot. And the Phantoms will need to be careful of that man coming out of the box. Five seconds left, it's going to be another penalty killed by the whole Pirates. Even strength. Susters complaining to the officials. Belfit, Mr. Belfit there looking the other way. Uh, icing not given again. 12 minutes and 30 seconds of the game left. Use the hashtag PPVHP. It's... Uh, been quite the turnaround. Phantoms were leading, and uh, and then two goals in this period have, have uh, put paid to that on 43:06 and 43:41. Phantoms knocking at the door. Joe Gretton, and that intensity and that kind of passion in the game has has gone. Chance. Jarvis Hunt. Joe Gretton. Hunt. Uh, struggling to compete with the Pirates on that occasion. Gretton getting himself in a right state. But needs to be careful now, we don't need the Phantoms to be conceding the penalty. There's Pollard again and it was only moments before the first Pirates goal of the period that Pollard had a short-handed opportunity. Norton skates through. Weldon calls for it, fires it in, it gets deflected, Scott Robson goes and Bissonnet comes off the ice. There is uh, Scott Robson, foot race and uh, Weldon with a, a good pair of uh, heels there, gets a march on. Uh, the, the whole Pirates. 10 minutes and 48 seconds left. Phantoms have plenty of time, but we got a whistle, hand pass, and it's brought out. 
10 minutes to go, Alan Ter well, nearly 11 minutes to go, and I'm not seeing the Phantoms work Ashley Smith at all. No, a lot of the shots have been straight at him, but you know, it's only the last five minutes, I can't honestly think of a shot worthy of the name. So we need to find that jump, that intensity, that spark that we had in the first period. Um, had we not lost Hazeldean, we might be questioning if it was Joe Gretton time, but we need to find something offensive. It needs a spark from the Phantom's point of view. This is now fairly comfortable for the whole Pirates. And the Phantoms fans are doing their best. Better from the Phantoms. Comes off the back of the net. Good turn from Padalek. Blocked. And out come the Pirates. Well done, Alice Padalek. He was down there behind the goal. Ferrara, Bouglas. Straight down the middle, Lee Bonner. Well done, Jordan Marr. Very well done. Claire Ingham says it's painful. And I'm sure she's not talking about Joe Hazeldean. 9.58 remaining, Phantoms struggling. And it's one of these games now where you'll take it going in off, in off someone's bump. You know, something scrappy, they need a spark because they don't want to be going into tomorrow's an away game on Romford Way. No, um, and, and at the risk of, uh, you know, at the risk of dropping a sporting cliche in, it doesn't have to be a pretty goal, it just has to be in. Um, take, you know, the first Pollard goal, for example, that certainly wasn't pretty, but it got past him, and I think the way... Jason Hewitt shoots and scores. Phantoms four, Pirates six. And the Phantoms... Well, the Phantoms need to call a timeout and they need to get a break in play at this point because the uh, whole Pirates have scored uh, one, two, three, four unanswered and the, uh, the home team now are going to have an uphill battle if they're going to get a point. Definitely, um, and here it's just shown why he's the league's leading point scorer. Absolutely clinical finish, but left in way, way too much space. And yet another hand pass. I think that's third or fourth that we've seen tonight. You know, you can go most seasons without seeing one and then four in one night face off in the phantom zone won by the pirates um, though ben on twitter says still plenty of time left phantoms need a goal stopped by ash smith um, the phantoms have to turn tail pick the puck up in their own zone the goal on 50 29 17 from 73, Bissonnet. Archer with a little saucer pass. The uh, Phantom there beaten. And you've got Davis out there and you've got Towner out there. And uh, the Phantoms have got kids. Here comes Ross Clark. Nathan Pollard going down the left wing, held back by Sam Towner who puts his stick round him, nothing called, but on that occasion it was done, it was a foul, penalty, 8.17 remaining, Phantoms need a goal. Good play from Pollard into uh, Robbie Ferrara, puck comes around the boards. And uh, out towards the half board, Tom Norton battles for it and still battles for it. It's pinned on the boards. Oh, the Phantom's got a chance. Here's Pollard shoots. Uh, Smith pads in away. But that would be a shot on goal. The shot's on goal in the second period. Not sure we brought it to you, but uh, was uh, 11 on uh, Jordan Marr, 8 
on um, on Ash Smith. So that was 26 through 40 minutes on Ma and 20. So the uh, Phantoms shy, and it's going to be a power play for the whole Pirates. So if we just have a look at that again, battling on the boards. Just seeing that there. Well, that's not a penalty, is it? That's poor, really poor. And and I hope that the uh, whole pirate, yeah, I don't know if it was Bissonnette, is okay, but uh, didn't look like a penalty. So the Phantoms trail by two. It's going to be a high stick call. Yeah, it is Hewitt. I hope he's okay. So it looks like 17, Jason Hewis has got two minutes and Glenn Billing has got two minutes. Phantoms need a goal. Goal in the next couple of minutes and, uh, and then they pump and push for the, the final one. But it's been, uh, it's been a torrid third period. Yeah, and at the moment I'm struggling to see where a Phantoms goal is going to come from. Um, you know, we said earlier how dearly Pollards would love to have one. They've got one each. I think now is the time for that third line to really grind into gear. But Slava's been rolling for that fourth line an awful lot this period, and with you know the, quali the forward quality that that Pirates have got, unfortunately they're going to get picked off every time. Phantoms win the draw and it's four on four. Lee Haywood over the blue line. Callum Moon was calling for it. Stretch pass to Panic. Turns. Where's the support? There is none. And I think that will be one that you look at that on the coaching reel and Sipanik's deep in the zone and there's no man within 50 yards. Yeah, terribly timed line change there. The, the pass from Buglis to find step was great, but then everybody else disappears off for a line change, leaving, you know, leaving him completely exposed. Corey McEwen, it's picked off. Out they come, 6.13 to go. Norton at the point, calls for it. Needs a shot on goal. Oh, in front of Ash Smith. And the Pirates have it. And Bissonnette is in space and collects. Pirates not in any hurry at all. They just need to, to kill this. They can sit four men across the blue line, Alan. Yeah, but I don't think that's in the Pirates' nature. They're a very heavily offensive-minded team. And we go for it, but Ferrara, but he's on his own. Five twenty-nine remaining. Uh, nine seconds left. Chance. Goal! James Ferrara battles in the zone, chases it, wins the puck from Bissonnette on his own, upstairs, pumps the water bottle, Ferrara with a goal, and the Phantoms, well, there's a glimmer of light, the door has just been opened marginally. We asked for a spark. Ferrara's provided that spark, hopefully. 
But what we now need to do is something that we seemed unable to do of recent weeks, and that's hold on to a uh, no, not hold on to a lead, but not concede almost immediately after scoring. So I thought we just had a timeout called. Got a delay in the game. And the officials are talking to Slava Kulikov, that's Matt Thompson. Oh, so here it's going to the locker room. I hope he's not got a serious injury. That's uh, a real shock and a real surprise, especially with the game in, in, in poised as it is. So the Phantoms get the goal, 54-35, unassisted. Scott Robson have a shot, Scott, and uh, Ash Smith equal to it. Yeah, the Pirates Good ice the puck. Three, 50, 50 winning number, which was 2-3, 2-3. So four minutes and 52 seconds left. The uh, Pirates are at this moment without their talisman. He's been so potent throughout the evening. Uh, will the Phantoms find a way to capitalise? Phantoms lose it on the half board. James Ferrara collects it. Puck's bouncing and collected by uh, uh, by Robbie Ferrara. Robbie Ferrara's in space. Oh, and he just gets moved away. Ash Smith standing tall. It's going to be another penalty. And it's going to be a penalty on the Pirates. Jordan Margot's. Big moments for the Phantoms who were trailing by two. Susters doesn't connect as he would have liked. And moments after Jason Hewitt goes to the locker room, the Phantoms go on the power play. Absolutely huge opportunity now for the Phantoms. As we said, you know, Hewitt's been so influential in the game and he's the player coach. So now it's a real test of leadership of, of Towner at the moment to steady the ship. But Phantoms appear to be in the ascendancy again. Uh, he's a good lad, Towner, as well. So Roe on Twitter said it would be nice to see the Pirates win an away game. It's a really good working team. That, that's a really thoughtful tweet. I appreciate that from a Phantoms perspective. So it's Lee Hayward in the box. 3.57 remaining. Phantoms on the power play. Pirates lead by one. What's in store in the remainder of this game? Don't go anywhere. Shot saved by Smith. Well done for the uh, Pirates netminder. Back sticks to panics in space. And the Phantoms really need some shots on goal. Stepanek gets there first. The Phantoms are going to get caught short handed. Ma alert well battled by the phantoms but it's still with the pirates kevin phillips we've had a minute of this power play and the phantoms have not had a shot on goal here come the peterborough phantoms over the blue line no offside glenn billingclex 48 seconds out to the point pa padlek sweeps it to norton now Phantoms with an opportunity. Still the Phantoms come. Goal! With 21 seconds of Lee Hayward's Penalty still on the clock. Tom Norton dials up a tracer from the blue line and gives the Phantoms hope. So 
Sheffield Steel Dogs have beaten Telford Tigers 4 3 on penalties. So, Phantoms. Nathan Pollard. So the Phantoms back on terms with two minutes and 15 seconds left. They have scored the last two goals. Connor Pollard juggles the puck. Alan. Yeah, so showing skill with both hands, sticks and feet. Um, but you do worry with the prevalence of hand pass calls that have been given tonight. I think Connor's possibly slightly fortunate that that one wasn't called again. But we've got just under two minutes to go. The Phantoms crowd have woken up. And um, we're all square. Norton from Ferrara and Weldon. Phantom six. Jordan Marr releases the puck. I thought he was going to freeze it, uh, but uh, it's six all. We've got 1.23 remaining. The Phantoms are outnumbered. They've given it away, and wow, Robbie Ferrara. The Phantoms crowd are in it. Stepanek down low, one hand on the stick. Two Pirates look to get it. He stays, he's got the puck. Goal! Martin Susters! 7 6. Susters with a smile on his face. Let's see the replay. Stepanek has done terrifically well. Susters down low at the near post and puts it in. 7-6. The goal scored by Martin Susters. Lee Hayward looks like he's been sent to the locker room. One minute and two seconds left. Matty Davis goes to have a word with Ash Smith, and Ash Smith's had a good game, but Davis is saying, what's he saying, Alan? We win the face-off, you, you go. Yeah, um, he'll, have, he'll have given him some reassurance. And to be honest, that Norton goal, he was screened. There was not a lot he could have done with that. But, yeah, it, the plan from the Pirates will be win a face-off in the offensive zone or win the restart drive into their zone, Ash will come out, get, get Bissonette on there and really just, just fire in on, on net and keep keep getting that rubber in on Mar. Matty Davies doing the uh, Hewitt roll. So Slava Kulikov's called a timeout. The goal scored on 58. 58-58. Sisters from Stepanek. One minute and two seconds left. Will the Phantoms break their losing run? Hayward with the 10 minute misconduct. As Smith is gone. No, gets sent back. 45 seconds left. Smith is gone. 35 seconds left. The Pirates have the extra skater. 26 seconds shot. Mar saves. And that's not in the goal. Called as icing. 20 seconds left. Also, I'd like to wish a very happy birthday to Marcy the Pulsar for Monday from all of us here at the Peterborough Phantoms. Phantoms have the uh, puck. 
There is no netminder in the whole Pirates goal. 13 seconds left. Well, the puck can stay there, can't it? It's going to be brought back to the hash marks. Phantoms fans up. Whole fans disconsolate. Kirk, eight seconds left. Flicked in. Norton. Oh, Willie Weldon! The buzzer goes. Weldon with the buzzer beater. Phantoms. Eight, six. Same scoreline as the second leg of the semi-final. Yeah, and if I'm honest, I think the Pirates will be feeling, you know, quite aggrieved by that, feeling hard done by. They deserved at least a point from that. But all credit's got to go to the Phantoms. Showed real, real resilience there. And we've got a couple of the Phantoms boys are doing the coronavirus fist, but um, elbow shake there. So that's the first, first mention of COVID-19. So the goal's been given, obviously, to Will Weldon. So he now just, uh, just await the man of the match. So the Phantoms win 8-6, they do snap their losing streak. The fans will go from the stands into the car park. They will remember the last, and I'm going to say three minutes. In truth, for large passages of that game, the Phantoms were lack confidence, couldn't get a puck on goal, and yet they found that resolve and will to win. How important is that, Alan? You know, it's always important to win a, you know, snap a losing streak. Winning's a good habit to get into. It's a hard habit to gain, but it's a really easy habit to break. So, you know, and when you, know, when you are down, it is easy to stay down. But, you know, against a top side, as Hull undoubtedly are, it does show real character to, you know, to come back from, you know, 6-4 down and score, you know, four unanswered goals. Hull will look to losing Hewitt, and it is a bad blow. I sincerely hope it's nothing serious, and we'll see him for the rest of the season. But Phantoms profited. You can only play the team that's in front of you. And having been under the cosh for, as we said, large, uh, you know, large portions of that game, to take the two points and to keep themselves ahead of Bison, who, you know, don't forget, picked up two points tonight. But with Telford losing as well, Phantoms will be left wondering what could have been were it not for last weekend. Man of the match for you. I thought Davies for them was outstanding as as always. I was I was no, impressed with Smith. I've, I've criticised him in the past. I've made no bones about it. You know, was he a, a seven? You know, a seven goal goalie? Didn't play like it. For Phantoms, I thought Hazel Dean up until his departure was was very good. I'd give it well done. Yeah, Wells well has played a, a you know a cracking shift all night long, as have both the Pollards. Uh, Bissonnet. Perhaps less influential in the first, but I thought he grew and you know he's the sort of player. This is the sort of player I would like to see at the Phantoms. Now, I don't know whether Padlet goes or not. You know, he retired at the end of last year, so is this one last one song? He becomes a Brit next year. So, uh, you know, does he stay? But uh, Bissonnet, good player. The whole Pirates. So the Phantoms fans stay in the stands and applaud the Pirates.
that was uh, some evening's it's entertainment. The award of being for the Man of the Match Award. Man of the Match, number for your Peter of Phantom. 29, Will Weldon, surely. It goes to number 17, James Ferrara. James Ferrara. Well, I've got to say to you, views at home, I'd have given it Weldon. But the goal that Ferrara scored for 5-6 when the Phantoms were in a hole, unassisted, maybe deserves the beers for it on its own. So, ladies and gentlemen, that will be the end of our broadcast. All that remains is for us to wish you uh, a good evening. We hope that the uh, Hull Pirates uh, players and coaches and, of course, the fans have a safe journey back, the 113 miles back to Hull. And uh, we will see you, if you can't be here at the rink, next Sunday against the Swindon Wildcats, 5.30 face-off, and the Phantoms celebrate with their players. And uh, we're pretty pleased to see them do that, aren't we? Thanks for joining us. It's good night from him and it's... Good night from me. Good night. Good night. <laughs>